Welcome to the podcast, Speaking to Influence, Communication Secrets of the C-Suite. I'm Dr. Laura Socola, your host, founder of Vocal Impact Productions, and author of Speaking to Influence, Mastering Your Leadership Voice. My guest today is Lauren Rinali, president, CFO, and co-founder of First Resource Bank, a relationship-focused community bank based in Chester County, Pennsylvania. Lauren, thank you so much for joining me today. It's my pleasure. Thanks for inviting me. Now, before we get into the official uh, interview flow, I have one extra question for you. I want to know, what was the first album you ever had? Oh, no doubt. Depeche Mode. I was a diehard Depeche Mode fan. I saw them in concert 20 times or something like that. And it's, uh, it's very happy memories of listening to them and going to those shows. So yeah, that was a great question. Was there a name, uh, a name to that particular album or was it just their self-titled album? Uh, Music for the masses. It was excellent. <laughs> 1988. It was awesome. All right, everybody. Depeche Mode. You heard it here first. Mm-hmm. Now, more focused on the business world. Influence. That's what we're really here to talk about. Of course, Depeche Mode had its influence on you. Who do you need to influence <laughs> today in your current leadership role? Sure. Well, in my current role, it's really a lot working with investors and with prospects in, in our business. So working with investors, really being able to articulately tell the story of First Resource Bank from founding through today. And it's been, it's been just over 15 years and, we, and we've been through a lot in the financial world in particular and how you weather those crises and, and get through to the other side is really important. It shows your mettle, it shows your ingenuity, being able to pivot along the way. And uh, I find a lot of my time in those types of meetings with investment bankers and investors directly, but, but also with business owners. I, I really like to be able to get out and kind of hear firsthand the challenges that they're facing as well as how we can meet their needs head on. Nice. So then with all of that, what is the biggest communication challenge that you and the bank are facing today? Right. Well, right now, obviously, with the pandemic, we're, we had to go remote in a, in a really abrupt overnight fashion. So on March 13th, we sent 40 of my 50 employees home. And uh, we had pandemic plans in place for years that we tested here and there. But it's really tested the communication as you have no water cooler conversations, you know, you you take for granted those conversations you could have as you walk past somebody's desk and, and hey, let's look at this report together. So it's been really challenging. And we've, we've been adapting by using video chat. We've been using Microsoft Teams, and it's been really a lifesaver for us to stay connected as we're all over the place. And on top of all that, we, we were highly engaged in the payroll protection program, that, that PPP mm. program. So on top of doing our regular work in a pandemic, in a remote situation, we had this tsunami of extra work <laughs> where we did, we did $58 million worth of PPP loans on top of all of our regular work in a program that the government changed the rules every day. So being able to communicate those changes on a daily basis was challenging as we're trying to keep everybody on the same page, especially those customer facing people who we're not all, we can't all have one big meeting and, and people are running around like chickens with their heads cut off. Um, we did find a way to keep everybody up to date and in the loop and make that program a success for us and for our borrowers. I would think it's not just a matter of being able to, to communicate those changes. You have to figure out what they are. You have to yes. uh, digest them and understand them well enough to then be able to distill it for whoever the audience happens to be, your, your um, clients and investors and whoever else. It's not Being able to understand it is one thing, but to translate it into normal people language so that you can have those conversations, I, I would think would be just as much of a challenge in many ways. It is. And, and there literally was a point where the rules were changing daily. And it's, wow. it's, there's a lot of reputational risk that goes along with that. We want to make sure that we are giving everyone the right information. And when the government keeps changing the rules midstream, it, it, it definitely made it challenging. Sure. I mean, certainly understand why they may need to do that as they learn more and their world <laughs> keeps changing. But wow, that constant domino effect of oh, change for one, changes for everybody. Surprise, change again, pivot, pivot. Mm-hmm. I think pivot has become everybody's word of the, word of the year, perhaps. Mm-hmm. Massive pivot. Then in order to do that, what communication skills did you have to develop? Well, um, the, written, the written form of communication is incredibly important, but more than anything, it's getting on the phone with people and doing exactly this. This, this video is as, as best a proxy as possible for those in-person meetings. And uh, as I said, we, we've, we've really embraced using Teams, and it's been a great way for us to stay in touch. Um, I do a daily email to all my employees every day. And some days I have 25 bits of news to report. PPP changed this, or, you know, happy birthday so-and-so. And... 
some days it's, you know, hey, it's going to be hot out today. Everybody stay hydrated, right? But I think it's important for everyone to hear from me every single day. We're here. We're all in this together. And um, it's funny. I have a lot of employees who have told me, like, as soon as I see your email, I open it right away. I always end it with a, with a silly meme, um, something about COVID or something like that. And, and uh, it's been like, it, it's been fun because I have the employees now sending me, um, hey, if you run out, you know, hey, use this meme tomorrow. And uh, it, it's, it's they, they, kind of like they like seeing, you know, meme credit today goes to, you know, Susie. <laughs> and, um, it's, it's just been a nice little way to try to stay connected. That's sweet. It's a nice little family feeling to it when you've got your employees sending you the memes that they'd like to see in your daily update. It's very much a family feeling. I mean, that, that's how we always think about every employee we bring on. We say that's an employee, but there's a family behind it. We're a family ourselves mm. and, we, and we look at the family behind the scenes because, you know, the communication challenges continue with who has a toddler at home, who just found out last night that their school went hybrid and their kids are only going to be in school two days a week. Right. Um, wow. You know, and you just have to adapt to it and, um, you know, roll with the punches and it's, you know, recognize that everybody has a life outside the office too. Right. Right. So you're in that role as well. You've got young ones who are going to be at home three days a week. Well, they're older, they're teenagers and they're happy to ignore me, but <laughs> they're, they're, they're sad. They're sad about what's going on and, you know, not seeing their friends every day in school. And what if my best friend is on day one and I'm on day two and everybody's right. got challenges outside the office that they have to deal with. So. Right, right. Plus, of course, there's all the stuff about now managing the emotions of teenagers, which is a whole different ballgame when you're whole different ballgame. <laughs> right. There's a whole co different communications podcast program about that whole thing, which is way above my pay grade. So shift, yes. <laughs> shifting I, back I, to I, work. I would Go be ahead. a student on that one, not a speaker, that's for sure. Yes, I'd be front row, uh, <laughs> notebook in hand, and possibly you know a cup of coffee and or popcorn either way, because I'd be very well engaged and sucked mm -hmm. into that. Mm -hmm. Then, in all of these changes that we've been undergoing at home and in in the virtual world and PPPs and all this, what's a mistake you made or a lesson you had to learn the hard way it, regarding communication? So one of the lessons I learned early on in my career was that if you bring a problem or a challenge to your supervisor, always have a couple of ideas, you know, possible solutions to those problems. And one of the problems that we faced a couple of years ago is we were, were growing our business and we really needed to hire the right type of person to help us develop business. And we had a candidate that on paper was spot on perfect. There was something in my gut that said, this is not going to work. And I kept going through my Rolodex, everyone I would meet, I, I couldn't come up with someone better than this person that was perfect on paper. So I went against every bone in my body that said, this isn't going to work. And we brought that person on. And of course it didn't work. And what it's taught me regarding communication is I interview different and mm. I interview now 50% skills, 50% fit. It may even be a higher percentage for fit because Tell us what you mean generally um, being able to be a part of the team and to be a team player and to kind of embrace our culture, which is not for everybody. I mean, we're, sure. we're intense. We, we operate a lean machine and we're very invested in what we do. We're very proud of what we do. There's rarely the nine to five person at my bank that clocks out and isn't thinking about the next day or that customer, or how am I going to make sure that I get them? You know, I have that one customer who's looking for 2020 20 pennies, right? How am I going to make sure that I help them find the, you know, just silly things like that, that make us different. Right. But my theory is I can train anyone to be a banker. I can't train you to be a decent human being. If you've got mm -hmm. the decent human being part, I can teach you how to be a banker. So more than anything, I'm less focused on what skills they're bringing to the table. Now, listen, there are some technical jobs, IT and things like that, where you need to have technical skills. But when it comes to a general customer service role, some of our best employees have been people we found on a golf course, in a pizza shop, in a bar. And those um, types of skills really translate well to banking. So mm. um, it's been a different interview process, and I've really enjoyed it a lot more. And I think we've found a lot of really good people changing how we do it. So go back on and, and go into depth a little bit more for me on that one. What skills uh, or uh, what is it about in being golf course, pizza place, wherever it is, what translates mm -hmm. well to banking? Because that's not something that people would think is it necessarily a, a, an obvious fit. What sure. are you well, it's, a, it's all about customer service. It's, it's, the regulations are important and yeah, you have to follow all those. And again, we can teach you all those, but it's that actual, that's that caring about, that customer having a good experience. It's everything. And in so many banks nowadays, it's just transaction, transaction. They have turnover in their branches over and over again. Every time you walk in there, there's different people. Like 
I have a lot of people that have already hit 15 year anniversaries and we're only 15 years old. I mean, I have had people who have been here since the beginning because they embrace the culture and want to be a part of it. So, um, but yeah, the customer service skills, if you're a bartender, here's another one, but uh, we recently hired a bartender and when we talked to him in his interview, we said, you know, you have somebody who comes up to the bar and they, and they sit there and you don't know if they had a good day, a bad day, their dog just died, they won the lottery and you're reading that person right away, right? No different in a bank. Somebody's coming up with a check. That could be an inheritance check that they're devastated and it's not a happy moment for them. Or they mm. could come in and they just won the lottery. And understanding how to read that person and read that situation right away and really be human about it is something that's, that's lost in general in banking that we try to really stand out and be different by doing the way, the way that we do. That's great. I never would have made those kinds of connections. Then what's next for you, whether personally or for the bank? And what kinds of communication skills will you need to develop in order to achieve that goal? Oh, Lauren, I think we just froze. Chris, are you there? I'm here. But yeah, she Oops. does appear frozen. Well, it was good timing, at least. It was in the middle of the interview, uh, at least at the end of the question. Okay, let me hit pause. Uh, Laura? Lauren, can you hear me? Lauren? And this is why we edit. Uh, let me make a note here. This is timestamp, about 11 minutes. Can you hear me? Okay, so you got to unmute yourself, Lauren, and we got to get your phone to rectify itself. Your camera, that is. I think she. Yeah. There we go. Okay. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay, now I hear you too. Good. And let me just do a little. Not sure what happened, but the good news is that it was in the middle of my question rather than your answer. So I'll just go right mm -hmm. back and we'll start okay, all great. over. So we really appreciate your phone conking out at uh, just the right time. Makes it much easier <laughs> for editing purposes. Okay, so this is about 11 minutes. Got it. One of the challenges of Wi-Fi. Mm -hmm. All right. So I'm going to uh, just hit record again, and then we will start at... Um, yeah, uh, well, I'll just ask that last question again. Okay. Then what's the next big goal for you? What's the next given all that you've created so far, whether personally for you or for your organization? And what communication skills do you need to develop in order to achieve that goal? So I am currently president and CFO of First Resource Bank. And as a co-founder, I've had a CEO with me, my business partner, Glenn Marshall, for almost 16 years now. He's the one who gave me the career opportunity of a lifetime. And he's getting ready to retire in about five years. So it's, it's really both personally and for the bank, the next step would be for me to get ready to take over that role in, in the next probably five years. Um, I'm not pushing him out by any means. I really <laughs> enjoy working with him. And uh, I've learned a ton from him. And um, he uh, pushes me just in the right way. And the things that I know I need to work on to be ready for that is I need to make more time to get out of the office and to be communicating in person, which of course is challenging right now. But yeah. someday this is going to be over and I'm going to be able to get back out and, and really be pressing the flesh again and going out to customer sites. And I think there's no better way to understand where my business has to go than to understand where my customers' businesses have to go and to really just get out there and, and be the face of the bank and you know really get out there and hear firsthand from them what they need and tell them how we can help them to, to continue the long-lasting partnerships that we have. Right, right. Well, that brings us to the 24-hour listener's influence challenge. So given everything we've been talking about so far, this is your opportunity to speak directly to our listeners and to challenge them to take one step that they can complete in the next 24 hours for them to have more influence. How would you like to challenge our listeners today? So I would like to propose an email holiday, 24 hours where there's no email and it's just face-to-face, -face, telephone, video, just get away from the email. It's, it's, it, it's such a productive tool, absolutely. And there's times for it, times that you need it to send a document. But um, I find email to be um, a little impersonal. I find that the tone can often be misconstrued. And I find that it just snowballs. I mean, there are times, I have a friend at work that we will constantly yell back and forth, what's your number? 
and what the number <laughs> means is how many unread emails do you have? And when we get into the thousands, we, we start shaming each other like, all right, we got to stop. Just stop doing everything. We just got to clear out email. And um, so anyway, I, I just would challenge everybody to think about, can I make a phone call instead of doing this email and just make it a little bit more personal? Okay. So either email moratorium for a day or at least only when necessary to send a document or, or something along those lines. But for a whole day, whenever possible, pick up the phone instead or do a Zoom call instead. Yeah. Don't send the email. I just felt half the listeners out there, like hair on the back of their neck just stood up. This is your challenge for the day. You can do it. We have faith in you. <laughs> Connect with those voices. Now, this brings us mm -hmm. to part two, um, which is about guiding others on the journey. So when you think about things like succession planning, career advancement opportunities in the, in the bank, people talk about things like executive presence, otherwise mm -hmm. known as leadership presence or command presence, that X factor that lets you know that somebody really has it to be a leader. How do you define it or how do you evaluate that in others? Mm -hmm. I think there's three criteria there for executive presence. Uh, one is they're respected. Uh, they're respected, they're knowledgeable, and there's that aura about them. Um, mm. I think the respected part is huge because to have the respect of the people above you, below you, around you, it, it's a real testimony to your character and to the trust that they've all placed in you. So to me, that's the basis of everything, all of all relationships. And then when it comes to knowledge, um, what I mean by that is it, don't assume that someone else is going to do the dirty work or the detail work. And I think you really need to have a comprehensive understanding of how things get done A to Z. And whether you're a bank or you're a baker or a communication specialist, I mean, understanding soup to nuts what's going on. I, I think there's no quicker way to lose the respect of your team than to really not understand what they're facing on a daily basis. So I, I, it's really important to me. Uh, we had a challenge one year that if, uh, if retail met their deposit goal for the year, I was going to work a teller drawer for, for a day. And it was really eye-opening as far as, you know, well, this is, this is dumb and you need this new equipment and you need this and you really need to understand um, what they're facing every day. So I think that's important. And then when I talk about the aura, I mean, you, you know, you can usually walk into a room and you know who the boss is and they don't have to say anything. You can just see how people look to them. Um, look at them, speak to them. And I think, like you said, it's the X factor, right? It's, it's a charisma. And I find who wants to work with someone for 40 plus hours a week that they just don't like? Um, I, I find it interesting when you hear about a tyrant boss and um, I just, a paycheck will only get you so far. Um, it goes back to that respect thing. And um, yeah, I think it's really important. Absolutely. And I've always said that leadership by definition, by my definition, is an image. And you, people, you can be the boss, at which point people follow you because they have to. They punch a clock, cash a check. But if they're following you willingly, it's because they view you as a leader worth following, worthy of following. And then they give you their, not just their time, but their heart and their soul. And that's, that's when things really take off. Absolutely. You want them marching into battle with you, not marching into battle at you. <laughs> yes. See, prepositions matter. Who knew your English teacher was right? <laughs> That's a big mm -hmm. difference. Then when you're grooming a high potential employee, you're talking about your own succession planning, getting ready to mm -hmm. take over the CEO role in a couple of years, then obviously somebody will need to take over your role and, and mm -hmm. so on and so forth. When you're thinking about that, either promoting or hiring, what are the three most important communication skills you look for? Mm -hmm. I'm going to go back to that respect word again, because it's huge to me. The res if you have the respect of your peers, that tells me that you're a good communicator. And that's right the baseline that I need to know. Um, also, I find challenges with people with their written skills. And as much as I hate email, and I'm saying, please don't send me an email for 24 hours. I find it problematic when you meet someone who's brilliant, and they struggle to write an email, and it, and, and, and it doesn't show their brilliance. Yeah. And I think... There's a lot, I think in the texting generation and, and all this, I, I think it's really, I think it's gotten a little bit lost. So I am focused on written communication skills. I mean, verbal as well, of course, but I find that the written ones kind of tell me something more about the person. Um, and then also another pet peeve of mine is do they share information? Sometimes people have that mentality that information is power. I have it, you want it. Um, I need to know that I've got somebody that I can trust in that if something goes wrong, are they going to be comfortable raising their hand and, and talking about, let's get to the best solution possible. Three brains are better than one. 
Um, we've had a couple of those issues over the years, and I've been pleasantly surprised with employees who haven't been afraid to raise their hand and say, hey, I screwed something up. Um, can you help me fix it? And I think that that's always, always better. So I'm a big information sharer, and mm. I, I would look for, for, for my team to be the same. Then on the flip side, what would be a red flag that no matter how great the person seemed otherwise mm-hmm. would just stop you from hiring or promoting them? Right. Uh, I'll say don't be a part of the mean girls click, which I'll call the mean <laughs> kids click. I mean, every office has them, the gossips, the backstabbing. I mean, there is no more of a turnoff to me than that kind of mentality. And um, it just would be a non-starter with me. Sure. Sure, which I suppose might be hard to to identify on a hiring side, but at least from promotion, you'll know people's mm-hmm. reputation from there. Mm-hmm. Then you mentioned this a little bit earlier, but with regard to managing up, right? As you, people who are your direct reports or perhaps indirect reports have to present information up to you, what's something you wish they would do differently? Mm-hmm. There's an art to managing your boss's time. And some people are great at it and some people aren't. And again, I'm going to use that email word again, but I mean, do you need to interrupt or would a two sentence email suffice? You know, sometimes you're in the zone and you're cranking something out or you're on this thought process. And then somebody comes in and says, you know, that toilet paper order, did you want it to be one ply or two ply? And you're like, really? Like you you, you need to sometimes, sometimes think about what that question is and is it, is it really um, you know, something that's worthy of this, I don't want to say worthy of the time, but like, is this something that needs to be answered right this second? Um, and is this something I can answer on my own? I mean, and then also when you come to me and maybe you have a problem, and I talked about this earlier, don't be surprised when I ask you for what your opinion is. If you come to me and say, Hey, we have this problem with this customer and they need, um, you know, a hundred thousand dollars in pennies every week. And that's logistically going to be challenging. And do you think we should do it or not? And I'm going to automatically say, well, what do you think? And, and don't be surprised by that. And I say that because a, I, I value everybody's opinion and B you've thought about this a hell of a lot longer than I have. And you know, I want to know if, if my knee jerk reaction may be missing something. If you've been thinking about this for minutes, hours, weeks, who knows, um, be ready to share your opinion. It's a great way to shine. Yeah, if, at that point, if your boss is going to give you the opportunity to show how awesome you are, how smart you are, how much potential you have, mm-hmm. don't squander it. Right. Terrific. Then we are now at the speed round. And in the speed round, these are my last three big questions. And each one addresses a different topic that is something that commonly arises in my coaching and in my training sessions with clients. And a lot of people get stuck on them because they think of them as black and white, as either mm-hmm. or questions where... Typically, they're not. And they often feel like they're the only ones struggling in these areas. But I want everybody to understand that this is not the case. They're not alone. So with that, uh, in a single word or phrase, I'd like you to tell me what your instinct response is for either one, for these sort of false binaries of sorts. And then I'll follow up with an opportunity for you to give us a little bit more detail and explain. Okay. So Mm -hmm. with that, number one, public speaking, love it or hate it. Depends. Pretty much hate it. Um, can I, if I, can I elaborate on it? Uh, sure. Go ahead. Yeah. So, um, ask me to talk about my kids. Ask me to talk about my bank. I will shout from the rooftops. I will talk to any anyone that will listen to me about how great they both are. Um, what my bank does in the community. I can go on for hours. Um, ask me to do a speech on banking regulations to a crowd of a thousand people. You're getting me pretty anxious. Um, right. That's why something like this is a great opportunity to just. I mean, it's just me and you talking, but it's still it's it's. Every opportunity you have, I mean, public speaking isn't just standing in an auditorium. It's at a board table. It's at a staff meeting. And and all those opportunities are great development opportunities. Yes, yes. And I always redefine public speaking. It's not about when you're either at a podium or on a stage or in a spotlight or something. That public speaking really is any time you're talking to someone other than yourself. You have an audience. So whether it's one and we're here one-on-one talking, but also to the larger audience of all of our listeners, uh, you are trying to influence somebody else with that comment, whether it's your significant other or your boss or your uh, team or your, the world, you need to be compelling in that moment. So I think that's terrific. Then can you give one tip for managing those nerves and speaking with confidence in those more formal contexts that you described where perhaps you're not as confident? Right. It's all about knowing your stuff. It, 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 you have to practice to the point of not being scripted, but being very comfortable with the content. And that's, that's the only way that I get over that hurdle. When I know my stuff, then the nerves go down quite a bit. Sure. Okay. Then what about this one? 
introvert or extrovert? Where do you fall on that continuum? Mm -hmm. I would say leaning more towards introvert. Okay. Then as an introvert, what's one related strength of being an introvert mm -hmm. and one area for growth? Sure. I mean, I think one of the benefits of being uh, leaning more towards the introverted side is I, I tend to develop deeper relationships with a smaller group of people versus a zillion acquaintances. I've got a nice tight circle of, of, of friends that I, that I lean on quite a bit. And I have um, similar connections in, in a professional sense. And I think that focusing my time and, and energy on those connections makes them productive and fruitful. Um, on the challenge side, you know, I'm not a huge fan of the walking into a card exchange with 500 people I don't know. That that casual um, banter is is something that I don't enjoy, but I am slugging through and getting better at. <laughs> and that's something we can talk about later. We'll get really good at all that kind of fun networking stuff because extroverts mm -hmm. like me love it. Mm -hmm. Finally, handling conflict. Now, nobody likes conflict, but when faced with potential conflict or a difficult conversation, is your natural instinct to want to avoid it or to want to address it head on? Always address it head on. And what have you learned about that tendency and what's some advice that you can give people about doing that? I mean, I think when there's an elephant in the room, it's, it's, it's silly to not address it. I, I don't, I, I can't stand passive aggressive behavior when you know that people are annoyed. And, and I find that often in the workplace, it's simple communication challenges or, or miscommunications that are the, at the heart of whatever the challenge is. And I'm, I will drag all the right people in the room and nobody's leaving here until we figure out what is going on. What happened here? Who, what, what's stressing you out? What's stressing you out? And I, I can't think of an occasion where the end result wasn't that we figured it out and everybody kind of went on their way. So I don't see any benefit to not do that, to be honest. Maybe I'm that's biased because right. that's my, that's my inkling, but I, I, I would never want to avoid it because it just, it just doesn't go away. Sure. Sure. It just kind of festers after a while. Right. But, well, Lauren, thank you so much for joining me today. How can people learn more about you and the bank? Sure. Well, I would encourage you to check out the firstresourcebank.com uh, website, and that's first is spelled out, F-I-R-S-T. And check us out on LinkedIn and Facebook, and we're, we're constantly posting so, some relevant financial information, just tips and tricks and, and things that we're all about. So uh, come check us out. Terrific. Thank you again for joining us today. Listeners, thank you for tuning in, and be sure to subscribe so you never miss an episode don't forget also, please give us a five-star rating on iTunes so that we can help even more people increase their confidence, presence, and influence on video and elsewhere. And finally, if you want to download my quick start guide to mastering the, th the three C's to command the room, connect with the audience, and close the deal, go to speakingtoinfluence.com. I'm Dr. Laura Sokola, and you're listening to Speaking to Influence, communication secrets of the C-suite. Hi everyone, this is Dr. Laura Sokola, and I want to sincerely thank you for listening to the Speaking to Influence podcast. If you love listening to these episodes as much as I love bringing them to you, be sure to subscribe so you never miss an episode. And please go to iTunes right now to rate and review our podcast in order to help us expand our reach so even more people can master the three C's to command the room, connect with the audience, and close the deal. Thanks for listening to Speaking to Influence, Communication Secrets of the C-Suite, the show for leaders who want to speak with impact. The hosts, producers, owners, and media distributors of the show make no guarantees that the strategies and information discussed will result in profit or other success and may result in losses. The opinions and statements of the hosts and guests do not necessarily reflect the opinions of the owners, staff, managers, broadcasters, or sponsors of the show. No medical or psychological therapy or personal or professional wellness or relationship advice is offered in the show. You are advised to seek counsel on matters related to your health, family, relationships, job, or other business and legal matters from licensed advisors in those areas prior to making any changes in business or lifestyle. No information provided may be suitable in your situation. As always, take responsibility for the decisions and actions you take, including the reactions they may make in your work, family, health, and life.